Okay, so today is a little bit different. We're going to talk about uh, blocking in or the underpainting. And I'm going to give you a little spiel on what it is. And then I'm going to give you a couple of tricks on how, um, how I convert or see my reference photos and convert them into the, uh, the blocked in or underpainting. And then I'm also going to show you how to use Photoshop if you're not so inclined. So lots of information to share with you today. Let's get to it. So what is blocking in or the underpainting? Almost every video you have ever watched on how to paint has probably referred to the uh, blocking in or the underpainting of your composition. And what's exactly what it is, is it's really establishment of the general composition of your piece. So there's really three key reasons why we block in, or three elements, if you will, of why we block in or do an underpainting. And that's to first establish like I said, the basic composition of our painting. The second is to establish the local colors or the most generalized colors that we see in our painting. And third is to establish our basic shapes. So here you can see me blocking in Morning on the Athabasca. And what I'm doing here is I'm really establishing where the big color changes in the sky and the mountains are. And now as I move to the water, I'm just thinking about the large clumps or the large established areas of color. Where does the color change? Where does the shape change? Where does the composition change? These are the things I'm thinking about when I'm blocking in, whether it's this morning or the Athabasca, or if we actually get into uh, our wildlife, even when I'm doing this painting, which is the uh, Red Pool in Sumac, or After the Rain is the name of the painting, it's the exact same thing. When I start to block in, I'm trying to establish the general composition of my painting and I'm really, really, really concerned with the basic or what I refer to as the local colors. And what do I mean by local color? What is the most predominant color in that area? So if we take the top of this uh, uh, red pole's head, <clears throat> the predominant color in the top of that head is a pinky red. So I've established a base color of a pinky red. And as I move into his bodies here, we get into more of the uh, beigey browns, the yellowy browns, and then the tinted pinky browns. So what I do is every time I see a major tr change in the uh, shape or the structure of the bird, I'm changing my color and I'm changing my values or I'm changing my uh, actual hue. And this is creating the blocked in the generalized shape and composition of the bird and of the painting. So as I come to the end of blocking into the bird, you can see that by just concentrating on the actual color changes and shape changes, we've created the form of the bird, right? So I have a good sense of this bird's shape. I got a good sense of its proportion and I know from just blocking in right now that the bird is, is properly rendered, properly shaped, properly proportioned, and it's ready to be uh, moved on to the next stage of really refining its shape and form and then adding the detail. But the blocking in is the first and most essential step of any painting. And for those of you that have watched any of my videos, you know that I probably annoy the heck out of you because all I say at least 10 times through every video is establish your shape, your form, build up your structures, and then add your detail. And it is so important. And blocking in or underpainting is, I think, the most important step of the painting because this is where all of my uh, changes are made. If I don't like a color, I can correct it at this stage. If I don't like the shape of something, I can correct it at this stage. And if I really don't like the composition, it's very easy to change at this stage because you haven't done a lot of painting and built up of paint. So now that we know what blocking in is, the biggest question I get, and I, probably the number one thing I get on, as a comment on most of my YouTube videos is, I have a real problem with blocking in because I have a problem seeing the shapes and seeing the short form and being able to break down my reference pictures into simple shapes. Well, I'm going to give you a couple of tricks that's uh, a, a lot easier way of seeing shapes, breaking them down, and creating an underpainting. And if you still have issues, I'm going to show you how to use modern technology to uh, do the work for you and have a little bit of a, a cheat sheet. And we'll learn how to use Photoshop to uh, break down. There's a couple filters in Photoshop 
that'll help you break down the painting into actual um, simple shapes which will really help you with your blocking in i'll also show you how to use photoshop elements which is a much cheaper version of photoshop but has everything you need in it to be able to do the breaking uh the the breaking up the shapes and breaking down into uh, basic shapes and forms and colors with your to help you with your blocking in and uh, that is probably a lot more price effective for a starting artist or a um, uh, a beginner because the uh, price point is a one-time shot you buy it once whereas full-fledged Photoshop which I use you have to pay for monthly but if you can swing it you definitely want to go with the full-fledged Photoshop so let's show you how to do it so let's use this line from my image archive uh, to explain how I see and how I break down my paintings into the uh, blocking in. So how do I get from that nice reference, uh, reference image that's on the left to the blocked in reduced shape, reduced detail on the right hand side? Well, there's three things that I look for. The first thing is shape. And when I say shape, I'm looking for identifiable shape changes or shape shifts or plane changes in the uh, in the subject that I'm painting. So let's map out some major shapes here. One, easy ones, eyes and nose. They create their own shapes, they're very distinct. They help me to navigate uh, around the rest of the painting by placing those in. Another big shape change is the head in this area I would see as one big shape and then I would see the main as another shape. Now, once I go from those shapes, I can use things like color to break down those shapes into smaller areas and more refined areas. So let's take the main. I would identify the color as a change here, which is a brown, a kind of a brownie beige. Then I would have a color change to a more warm yellow in this area and then I would change to a uh, rusty color on the top so now I'm applying my shape and my colors together uh, to uh, create a blocked in uh, image and the final thing is is my form so uh, by having the uh, this side of the face very light and then changing my shapes to a darker cooler side I create shape and form in the blocking stages. So those are the three things that I really look for. And luckily, when I look at a reference painting, this is what I see on the right. And how do I do that? Literally, there's <laughs> it, this. There's no big secret to this, and there's nothing fancy. I literally just squint when I look at my reference. And right now, if you look at the screen and you squint, you'll see that the left-hand side, it really reduces to what you see on the right-hand side. And that's exactly how I do my block, blocking in. I squint at my reference, see my big blocking in shapes, and then that's when I put them. And, and that's where I put them. That's how I put them. And what I'm looking for are the three major things. It's my shapes my colors and my form changes okay so that's the three keys for me to doing shape change but if you don't see those when you have uh, when you squint or you, you just don't feel confident enough to do it yourself we can use Photoshop to do it so let's go over to Photoshop now and I'll show you how to do the same thing so let's start with the full-fledged Photoshop. This is the one I use. This is the one I like. It's the uh, preferable one if you can swing it. So we have this beautiful picture of a lion and he's got a lot of uh, uh, hair changes, color changes, structural changes. So where do I start? How do I break this down? Well, let Photoshop do it for you if you're not inclined to see things in the uh, big shapes like we showed you in the last section. So. It's a very simple process. Just open up your file and we're going to go up to uh, filters and filter gallery. Now it's going to bring up this whole new window and it's got all kinds of, uh, the first time you open it, it's not going to have anything open. So you're going to have to go and open up artistic. Now in artistic, there's a wonderful little filter called poster edges. And look what it just did to that. Okay, it broke our, ti our tiger, our lion down into basic shapes. Now, we can play with uh, certain elements of it. Uh, we can do the edge intensity, which brings in a lot more detailing. I usually keep that right off because I don't want any kind of detailing. If I'm going to, this is, this is the filter that I'll use when I'm creating your uh, blocking in templates for the instructional videos. Is uh, This is exactly how I, I create that for you. So... 
I only usually play with posterization. And the nice thing about it is you can determine how broken down you want the photo to be. So if I slide this posterization down to one, it gives you a very basic, and this is a great place to start. Uh, this shows you the big color changes. This shows you the local color changes. And this gives you an idea of how to start painting your painting. Now, I usually use number two or three if I'm creating the, uh, the templates for you guys. Now, number two is more often the one I'm going to use because this shows you the nice color changes, but it doesn't overdo it it just shows you the big big changes if i go right on up to like three four you almost can't tell the difference between it and the photograph so let's actually show you what the difference is uh, between the two so let's cancel this so here's our lion that's the actual photograph we have now if we go up to uh, photoshop and we <clears throat> go to image and duplicate we now have a copy of our line. So let's go and do the filter on this one. So again, you just go up to filter, filter gallery. And once you're in the fil filter gallery under the artistic uh, folder, we want to use poster edges and we'll set that to two and we'll click OK. So now let's click back and forth. So here's our posterized. Here's our actual photo. Here's our posterized. And let's just Let's just make this the same size so we can get a good, so I can just go to zoom and fit on screen. And now when we click back and forth, you can see what it does. It broke down that reference photo into basic shapes. So there's our actual photo of this beautiful lion. And we click it, it breaks it down into an even, uh, a nice breakup of where the color changes are and where the shapes are. Now we can actually duplicate this again duplicate it and now in this one we'll just make it the uh, same we'll fit it on the screen all right now we can do a filter again and we'll go to filter filter gallery in our filter gallery under artistic folder we want to go to poster edges and let's break this down into one so now you can see how that really broke it down for you. And there you go. Now you can see how, where the major changes are, where the major color changes are, where the shape changes are, and the uh, basic uh, compositional changes in the uh, painting. And Photoshop has now successfully broken this down for you. Now I like the, that's setting poster edges on one. I usually use two to three. You can see that that gives you a nice little breakdown, shows you where the nice color changes are, where the shape changes are, and that's all you're going to need to uh, help you with your blocking in. Now, there's one other filter I want to show you. So we'll go back to the original again. We'll file, in, or sorry, image and duplicate. And now this time when we go to filter, filter gallery, there's actually another one that I like to use too. And this I use when I'm uh, seeing if my compositions are uh, working well if i'm if i'm building up a composition here in photoshop and i want to see if my compositions are working really well i use paint dabs because what it does is it breaks things down into uh, uh, basic shapes that look like they were dabbed on with small paint and you can adjust the brush size and the larger the brush gets the more abstract it gets okay so that's another filter that you might want to play with now all these artistic uh filters in here they have they can help you do a lot of different things in your painting if you're trying to think about uh, things you want to uh, to do or change, but you just don't have an eye for seeing those shapes and those changes. Photoshop can really help you, okay? So that's how you do a uh, breakdown in, um, in Photoshop. Now I'll show you uh, uh, um, Photoshop Elements. It's the exact same filters, just for some reason Adobe sets up the elements, which is just a uh, reduced or downsized version of Photoshop. They just uh, made a nice cheap, uh, I guess you would call it an entry level version of Photoshop. But for some reason, they lay it out differently. So I'm going to show you now how to do it in Elements.
All right, so here we are in a Photoshop Elements. So Elements is really just a reduced Photoshop. As I said before, it just doesn't have all the bells and whistles. For, for, so for the average artist, this is going to be all you need. Now, there's just a couple of things you want to make sure of before we start to uh, go, just so you don't get confused. Is there's three different layout settings in um, in Elements, and you got your uh, your quick, your guided, or your expert. For the sake of this uh, tutorial, make sure you're an, uh, an expert. You can play around with the others on, on uh, if you like. And uh, but right now, just make sure you're an expert so you can follow along and everything's good. The second thing is you want to make sure that background is highlighted. Okay, there shouldn't be any other layers, so you should be on layers down here. Make sure that layers. When I click on layers, and background is, and you're good to go. So. It's very similar in the uh, way of full Photoshop, except it doesn't have extra uh, extra steps because there's not extra files. So under filter, you can go to artistic and straight to poster edges. All right, and in there you got all your goodies. I usually put, like I said, get put the uh, thickness and the intensity down to zero and I just play with my posterization. Okay, you can click okay and there you are. You're, you're reduced. All right, and we can go to edit, undo poster edges. Now there is another way. So again, just making sure that that's highlighted down at the bottom here under filters, you can click on filters and that brings up the uh, uh, the artistic folder by default and under the artistic folder in poster edges. And you can again, reduce your thicknesses and your densities and you can play with your how much posterization it's going to do. Okay. So you can revert out of that. And uh, the nice thing about this one is you can do it in Photoshop too, but uh, in, uh, if you go to quick, you can actually in your view, say before and after horizontal, and it'll show you just two previews. And what you can do now is you can actually uh, go up to filters and uh, artistic poster edges. Apply your poster edges. And this will show you the before and the after. Okay, so there you go. There's the uh, quick way to let the computer create your um, your uh, blocked in or your major changes, your shaped uh, changes, your color changes, your local color changes for you. All right. So if you're not inclined in seeing them, use one of the Photoshop's. It'll do the work for you. So there you go. Three things to look for. Shapes, colors, form changes. Stick to those three things and you'll have a lot easier time taking your reference photos and converting them into solid blocked in underpaintings. So if you're not so inclined, use Photoshop. Think of it as another brush in your palette that just helps you get to a stronger final product. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Photoshop, I actually have a course designed for artists. The link to it is in the description below. So that's it. That's today's lesson. Till next time, everybody stay safe, be good to each other and happy painting.